I wanted to make a video about a problem I was having after switching to a TICN coded end mill. Um, normally the types of end mills I use are these ZRN coded quarter inch two flute variable helix end mills which are uh, advertised as really good for cutting aluminum. This is the cut I was testing out and it's the similar cut that I use for a lot of my uh, cam paths that I do. And this is what it looks and sounds like when I make this cut with the ZRN coded end mill. So I had recently broken uh, my zero end mill and I had to get another one and there was an inexpensive TICN coated end mill available on Amazon with quick shipping. So I got that. It's this uh, quarter inch end mill you see here, TICN coated. I had never used TICN coated end mills before and I immediately noticed a problem. Uh, just a warning, there's going to be some very loud obnoxious uh, sounds for the, <laughs> the rest of this video. This is what happens when I tried to make the this cut with this end mill. It sounds terrible. Um, it's some really bad chatter. And interestingly, the effect on the finish wasn't too noticeable, but you can see for about the top third to half of this uh, side milling that I was doing here, I was using the TIC encoded ML that was causing chatter. And it created this kind of unusual um, pattern that's almost like striations or something uh, that's in the top part of this, uh, this side milling. So I thought the problem might be that I wasn't taking a deep enough cut. So I tried uh, removing the same amount of material, half the width and twice the depth. And that actually just made the chatter much worse. The other thing I tried was doubling the width and having the depth, which still chattered, although it wasn't quite as loud. So I was trying to figure out why this was happening and I figured that something must have just come loose in my machine. Uh, so I went through, I, I made sure that everything has minimal backlash. I went through and adjusted all my anti-backlash nuts to take up any slop in the machine. Uh, I put my indicator on and pulled back and forth and made sure that everything was nice and tight and rigid. And after doing that, I uh, made the cut again. Here's what happened. So at this point I started to suspect that my Makita spindle had maybe just started to go. Uh, I had been using it for a long time. I had done some pretty horrible things to it. Um, maybe the bearings are just starting to give out. And so I got a new spindle. Uh, this is one of those Chinese spindles that you find um, all over eBay and Amazon in uh, bundles with the VFD. And it can be difficult to tell because this uh, is actually much, much quieter than the Makita. And so you hear the sound of the cut a lot louder, but yes, it, it still chattered. And 
And for comparison, here is a zero encoded ML making the same cut. It sounds louder here than it really is, uh, but rest assured that in person, this, this sounds really good. The next thing I suspected was that maybe something with the the mount that the end mill was sticking out of the holder had something to do with it. I had tried other things too, like I had tried conventional milling, and that didn't make a difference. It still chattered just as badly. Uh, I had tried some other stuff, some other end mills to see what they would do, and by far the worst was this TICN end mill for whatever reason. Uh, but I realized it was sticking out pretty far from the holder. On the Makita, you can only push tools up so far into the spindle, but this new spindle doesn't have that problem. You can get end mills as far up as you want. So I pushed it way up there so that it was only sticking out a little tiny bit uh, and tried to make another cut. And this is what happened. And so it's still chattering, and it's, it's just horrible. The pitch has changed, which is interesting. But overall, it's it's still bad. For comparison, here is what happens when I take a ZR encoded ML and have a really short stick out. Sounds great. So what I think is happening is that I think that this coding is just not great for for chatter. I think there are a lot of different contributors to chatter that have to do with machine rigidity and the amount of stick out of the tool. Those all play a part. But I think in this case, with the identical machine and the identical stick out, I think the difference is probably this coding and the roughness of those flutes. If you look online, it's actually hard to find good explanations of, of what the different coatings do. And a lot of the end mill manufacturers just talk about how good the coatings are or how they have a really low coefficient of friction and higher lubricity. And they, they don't really, they can, can sometimes compare them, but if you listen to what they say, they, they say they're all great. But I did find one source that talked about some coatings in aluminum uh, milling specifically. And this source was interesting because it talked about how uh, the PVD process of putting the coating on can create a rougher surface and having a rougher surface is really bad for aluminum because it gives a, a, the aluminum a chance to stick to something. And aluminum is a very gummy material to cut. So, uh, they recommended actually just having completely uncoated end mills, but they only really tested coatings besides ZRN. So I suspect that the ZRN actually does help some with, um, the, uh, smoothness, or at least the zero encoding doesn't reduce the the smoothness in the same way that some of these other coatings do. So for for milling aluminum, I think zero is pretty good. Or also uncoated can be very good. Although I have noticed that there's a there's a huge difference in end mills. Like if you look at these two end mills, the one on the top is uncoated from Lakeshore Carbide, and the bottom one is a YG1 uncoated, and you can tell that the the flutes on the YG1 have been polished to a mirror finish compared to the ones on the, the Lakeshore Carbide. And so I think that the amount of polishing of the flutes uh, can make a big difference. One uncoated is not the same as another uncoated. And I think the same is probably true of the coatings as well. Um, different people have different uh, application processes for the coatings, but I think having the smooth, really smooth flutes uh, is actually really important for aluminum milling. So I'm going to stick to, from now on, zero uncoated end mills or highly polished uncoated end mills. But I just thought it was an interesting problem that I found uh, and might as well make a video about my process to try to narrow down what's going on and what I finally decided I thought the answer was. Um, if you have any thoughts about what else it could have been, uh, let me know.